How's it going guys and welcome to episode 2 of the Garage Gym Build. As you just saw, I have a ton of boxes to open up of some really cool equipment I'm excited to check out. Um, I've restructured uh, the gym a little bit because before it just was not very functional but now it should work out pretty well. Um, I have some more equipment that I purchased uh, last week for Black Friday and then I also have another item that's coming in in the next couple of days and I also still have a $100 Rogue gift card. Uh, a lot of people on Instagram are saying like you can't really buy much with $100 but yeah I could use it towards something that maybe is like $200, $300 but uh, I'm really kind of trying to think of what I really want because I'm starting to get everything I really need. Um, I still need a couple, a few things but for the most part this gym is really coming together. So real quick, let's do a quick gym tour of how I've restructured it and then we'll start getting into the stuff that I just recently bought. So the first big change that you'll notice is that we no longer have the squat rack up against the side of the gym and now we have it up against the back wall. Before where it was, we actually messed up and we didn't actually test it out when we put a bar on it. But when you have the bar on there and you want to start loading the weights, there wasn't enough room to the side to actually fit a plate in between the storage lip and the bar. So, and also we couldn't move it anymore this way because it would end up hitting the wall overheads if you were doing any overhead movement. So we put it back here and it still works out pretty nice. You still have a lot of room here to be able to do any of your snatches and clean jerks, but typically I'll kind of just pull a mat outside and just lift outside for anything where I plan on being like oh, explosive doing jerks or snatches where it has a chance of me maybe possibly failing and I don't want to hit my uh, whatever this is, the garage freaking opener thingy. But it's pretty nice right here. Um, I want to start getting rid of all this junk on the top storage and use this as storage for equipment. A lot of the stuff we don't really need except spike ball, if that's a must, that's not going to go anywhere. Um, so that's one thing we want to do. But what kind of sucks with having the squat rack back here now is that there were two posts in the back of the squat rack that you could stack your bars in, but now they're unaccessible due to the lip of the uh, storage piece or the little, whatever you call this, this raised storage lip, that's what we're going to call it. Um, so now we have our barbells up against the corner, which isn't that big of a deal, but we want to kind of start getting rid of the junk up there, use that for more storage up there, and have more viable space uh, on the floor. So like I was saying, back here is where the posts are that the bars would normally sit in, but because now we have it kind of up against the wall and it's underneath this storage, you aren't able to put your bars back there. But right now we currently have our bars just sitting in the corner, which isn't that big of a deal. My girlfriend just got her again faster barbell last week, or actually earlier this week. Super nice, spins really well, amazing bar for only $150. Now, a couple of the purchases that I made um, during Black Friday that I didn't order online, I actually went to a local fitness store literally five minutes from where I live and got some really good deals on some equipment. And I got this dip bar, which I'm pretty happy about, but definitely has its flaws, but for the price, I mean, you can't really beat it. So, it's a very sturdy, it's thick metal, it's definitely, it's got the same exact company, that I believe it's E-T-E, is the company that made this squat rack and made this dip bar as well, that's what was on the box. But, a couple things I don't like is that it has a lot of sway. I wonder if they made it a little bit bigger and kind of gave that little bit of uh, open play just in case someone had a different kind of, kind of squat rack to see if it would fit but I mean it's not that big of a deal obviously when you're dipping you're putting all your weight on it so it's not going to slide around but another thing that I thought was pretty cheap was well actually now it's actually pretty sturdy but these end caps come out really easily that actually took longer than I thought normally they, they pop right out if you were like bump into it they usually come out pretty easily I mean this is something they could have just glued on or just made this whole end cap metal like to have one finish but I don't know. I think it's something just minor that I'm nitpicking about, but I mean, I got this dip bar for, I want to say, like $120 versus where it was normally $150. So, a great purchase. Me use it a lot. My girlfriend uses it a lot, so I like it. So, the next thing is I bought a bunch of dumbbells. Originally, when I went to the fitness store, the same place I got the dip bar from, I wanted to get a set of 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, and then just as the years go on, I would buy the half weights or maybe like the quarter uh, pound weights. But when I got there, they ended up not having a bunch of the sizes that I wanted. So I ended up getting 20, 30, 35, 40, 45 instead. Um, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It's still a lot of the main weights that I would need when it comes to working out. So it's a pretty good uh, option. But one thing that I didn't like when I got there is they didn't have any kettlebells at all. Luckily, I had heard some horror stories from the company beforehand 
and I didn't order anything or purchase anything beforehand online because you could fill out a cart and you know pay online and just show up to the store and purchase it. But I heard from the past that they do a very, very poor job on their inventory. So when I got there, I said, hey, do you have this? Hey, do you have that? They're like, oh, let's go look in the back. Versus, in my opinion, when you get a shipment of new equipment, have even at least an Excel sheet where you just plug in all the inventory that you have and then every time something's purchased, it's you know taken off of it. But I guess that's too you know, simple for them to even uh, think about. So I got these dumbbells, very happy with them. I wanted to get a couple of things from there, like again, kettlebells, an axle bar, um, a few other things, but they didn't have it. So I ended up getting that dip bar and these dumbbells. Just like I've heard from uh, Garage Gym Reviews that most dumbbells are all from the same manufacturer, just different companies put their different logos or brand names on it. So. When it comes to these ones, these are blank. They have no name. They just say 30 on each side, for example. And they're very nice. They're very, um, the knurling is pretty hard, but not hard, harsh enough to mess up your hands. The rubber is super sturdy. It's like a nice, thick, um, like there's some rubber ones that are kind of flimsy and they feel kind of not as durable. These feel really nice. My first time ever using brand new dumbbells and I'm super excited for them. So glad I have these now to the list. All right, so those are the current changes to the gym. Now to unpack this stuff and show you guys, all four of these boxes were from Amazon. I got them all for less than $200. After I unbox everything, I'll show you guys uh, the pricing and the pictures for all this kind of stuff so you can check it online and see if maybe it's something that you want to add to your gym. But all of these had really great reviews. They're all um, very highly coveted pieces of equipment that I think every gym should have to be versatile and not just have the typical barbell dumbbells. Not that that's wrong, but these are all especially things that I think every gym should have to essentially, you know, attack any single thing that you'd want to do in the gym. So we'll work our way down. This first box is a landmine. So, oh, this is actually a lot more pieces than I thought it would be. So essentially how, the, how this works is this is a base that you would put inside of a plate and then from here once I have this all put together you would put a barbell on the end and then you could do various movements twists and different things with the barbell so you can do rows you can do ab work you can do presses um, a very versatile piece of equipment that again you can do a lot of things with so I'm very excited to have this I believe I got this again I'll have all the prices up at the end but I want to say I got this for like 25 to 30 bucks and it had again very great reviews um, This end piece is really heavy. I'm happy about that. It's very sturdy metal. It's not like it's a piece of crap or made of plastic so very uh, excited for this All right, this next package is from Titan Fitness, but I got it on Amazon Let's see Very sturdy. So, what this is, it's a farmer walk handle. So, essentially, if you don't have the typical long farmer handles or you don't have a heavy set of kettlebells, you want to do things like farmer walks, one arm carries, whatever it may be, what you do here is you stick a bumper plate on this, you hold the, try to get it in the camera you hold the end and you can do walks here and I'm assuming with this you could load it up to a pretty heavy weight I literally just took it out of the box and it literally already has a bunch of marks on it all over it the metal finish is fine there's no scratches or dings on here but this metal piece has a bunch of scratches on it let's, let's check the other one this one not as bad but it still has its a couple marks on it. Yeah, I mean, I expect this piece to get. Oh, I'm trying to do this while looking at the camera at the same time. I expect this piece to get beat up pretty easily, and it's going to get pretty jacked up. All right, I'm going to open up this box, but I know it's not going to be much really to see in here. But essentially, what's in here is an Amazon Basics bench, so you can use this for bench press. I still want to check out and see like how the cushioning is and how the metal feels. Ooh, that was close. I almost, I almost cut the, the padding. Oh, I did cut the padding. Damn it. 
So I cut, I don't know if you can see that, I cut the end of the pad a little bit, but it seems like very hard foam. I'm not much of a bench presser. I do it every now and then, like maybe once a week when it's actually in my um, programming. Oh, I cut the other end too. <sighs> That's frustrating. Oh well. I mean, at least it's on the ends and not like in the middle. But I do bench press every now and then. I bench press no more than like 225 usually or anything lighter than that. So this should be just what I need. And it's only 40 bucks, which you really can't go wrong with. It looks like it also comes with a tool as well. So, I mean, if you were to have zero tools, you'd be able to assemble it with everything in this box. Here's one of the stands. It's very nice. So, essentially zero marks on it. It's very sturdy, nice metal. Are these glued on? Nope, but they definitely was, wasn't easy to take off. Maybe I'll glue those ends on so they don't slide off. And here is the base. Here's the base. Pretty nice. It's pretty thin metal, but seems very durable. No marks on it. All right, I've tried to reposition the camera a bunch of different times so I can have my face in it and I can talk to you guys, but it is not working in this tight space, so I'm gonna be a headless uh, box opener. But what this is now, if you can't already tell from the picture, it is a dumbbell storage rack. So this, well, I believe was about 70 to $80. It had, I believe, four and a half or five stars on it, and it's gonna fit essentially everything I need to fit on the rack. I have, it's gonna fit like the 45s, the 40s on the bottom, the 35s, 30s, and maybe the 20s also, so there's will be a little bit of extra room to fit other dumbbells on there. And then if I get anything heavier than like 50s or more, I'll just stack those to the side or contemplate getting um, a second one of these racks. Or I mean, for right now, for the very uh, you know close future, I don't plan on getting anything much heavier than 50s, so this should be able to fit everything that I need on it. have all the bolts and nuts stored so you don't lose them versus them being like little bags and you might actually throw them away. This is pretty cool. I like that. It's the first time I've seen something like that. Okay, here's one of the legs. It looks intact. I don't see any scratches or marks on it. What is this sticker? DBR86. Okay, I'll leave that on for right now. But it looks pretty nice, pretty heavy duty, especially for me only needing 50 pounds or less for dumbbells. But online, this looked more black, whereas right now it looks like a gunmetal finish. Not that big of a deal. I might spray paint it. Anything that's not that black, I might just spray paint my gym to make it all uniform. But for right now, I'd probably just leave it. It looks very nice. Again, no scratches on it. Here are the little end caps for the base. I'll probably glue these on so they don't come off. Whoa, okay, so the arms that connect the bases together are super heavy duty. These are really heavy. Oh, that's because this is three of them. That's why it feels so heavy. I wonder if it comes with plastic lips so you don't scratch up anything. It doesn't look like it. This is another, another set of three of the arms. No. So I'm wondering if eventually, from putting the dumbbells on so many times, that the uh, metal might start losing its finish or start getting scratches because it doesn't have any like, rubber to put the dumbbells on top of, but I don't think that'll be that big of a deal. Alright you guys, so it is currently the next day. Yesterday I didn't have enough time to put all the pieces together because I went to go uh, see Creed 2. Highly recommend it. Great movie. But first I'm going to start by putting the, together the bench. If you hear any noise in the background, that's Onyx chewing on a bone. I'm on puppy duty for the next hour or so. So, I'm gonna put this together and we're gonna test it out and see how it is. And the same with all the other items. I'm gonna build up the dumbbell rack and I wanna have all these dumbbells off the floor. We're gonna test out the landmine and then test out the farmer handles, see how heavy we can get with them. So 
So this is interesting. For me to attach the legs or the base to the frame of the bench, on the very first page, it says for the second step, you need eight washers, and then also you need four washers, so a total of 12. Whereas for the inventory, it only says four small ones and four large ones. So even though it says it only includes eight washers, it's asking for 12 total, so that's interesting. So another flaw with the build is that they include this little Allen wrench slash screwdriver to tighten down the bolts, but it barely even fits, and it would just actually thread the bolts if I use this to tighten it up. But my own screwdriver won't tighten up either, so now I need to find a different way I'm going to be able to tighten this up without stripping the bolt. Alright, there we go. So luckily I had a big enough head attachment to still tighten it up without stripping it. Alright, so the bench is done. It was actually just those two steps of getting the frame bolted onto the pad and then having the feet attached to the frame. So it was only two steps, which is pretty simple. But again, those two main issues were that even though the instructions say it's only going to include eight washers, the assembly said you needed 12. So that was a mistake on their end. And also, the tool that it came with, this screwdriver does not fit the screws that go into the bottom of the, the foot connecting to the frame. So you have to have your own screwdriver that's going to be thick enough to actually tighten up the bolts. But for 40 bucks, great bench. Again, you can see here where <laughs> I was stupid enough to think that I wasn't going to cut this, but I cut the end here, and then I also cut the end here. Luckily, it's on the end and not like in the middle or on the main part of the pad. So I'm just going to keep using it for the next few months, see if it gets worse. Otherwise, that doesn't bother me that much. I'll just keep it that way. Maybe, I don't know, tape off the end or something. But for 40 bucks, I'm very happy with this. It seems super sturdy. Um, so let's let's do some bench real quick. Pretty nice, definitely a harder foam. Like I mentioned before, this bench should be plenty for the amount of benching that I do. If you're a little up on the bigger side, if you're six foot or taller, if you have a pretty wide frame, I might not consider this bench because I'm pretty uh, small, I'm 5'5", 165 pounds, and I fit on the bench pretty nicely, but if I could see anyone being much wider build than me, that you would feel like you're kind of falling off the side. So if you're 5'9", 5'10", or shorter, not too um, wide of a frame, this would be a good bench for you. Alright, next we're going to work on the dumbbell racks. First uh, order of business, I'm going to take off this lame sticker because it looks dumb and is really unnecessary. Actually, can I take these off? Oh yeah. So these stickers on the front are like super cheap and easy to peel off. They don't leave any glue, so perfect. I'll probably paint these black. The gunmetal finish is really nice. It's really clean. There's no scratches anywhere. But I think black would just look nicer with everything else that's in the gym. And then also, on the bench, the screws at the very bottom, they're silver, but I think it looks kind of tacky on there, so I might just paint the screws as well while I'm doing this at the same time. That'll be for another day, though, so you guys might see that in the next video. Good idea. Black bolts. Nice touch. Alright, so this is going to take a good amount of time because the bolt is pretty big to where I don't have a socket that will fit it. So I have to use my wrench to tighten it up, which is taking forever. It took me like two minutes just to get that one beam up and I have five more to go. So I'll just show you guys when it's all done. Ta-da! Now I'm really happy with this dumbbell rack. It's very sturdy, the bolts are super nice and uh, strong, they're not like really flimsy or anything like that. Nothing on the rack is plastic. It's very, very nice. I like the finish to it, but I probably will paint it black. And there's plenty of other room for dumbbells that I might have in the future, like if I were to slide these down, 
I could probably fit a set of 15s here. And then again, if I get any bigger dumbbells, I'll just put them to the side and possibly get a bigger rack. But for right now, this is perfect and exactly what I was looking for. And the last thing to set up is this cap landmine. All right, landmine's done. It seems pretty sturdy and pretty heavy duty. And also a nice touch is that they have this little side piece here. So let's say you have like a strange barbell that's not the typical diameter for the collar. You could tighten it up here so it'll fit nice and snug. But even if then, if you don't have like, an, like a crazy skinny bar, like if it's just a slightly thinner, I don't think it'd make that much of a difference to where you need this. But I especially don't need this for my bar, so I'm just gonna take it off and probably throw it away. Yep, fits just fine, swivels fine, awesome. All right, now the last thing to test out are the farmer handles. So even though I don't plan on buying much else for my garage gym, at least not in the immediate future, I definitely need to get some clips because moving these outside by themselves, so like 10 steps, they both just slid off the ends because I guess even when you have that little bit of sway, they kind of were moving off the edges. So if you're using these, you definitely need to have clips or something to tie it down so they don't move around. Um, so in the meantime, I just got some bands, like some stretching or like some assistance bands. Nice, tied them on the end, so hopefully that is a trick for right now. Now for the weight, I have two 45s on each side. It doesn't really specify like in much detail how much weight you can have on each handle on Titan Fitness. They said it can handle 45s. I don't know if that's 45s as in a pair of plates per handle, that's an individual handle, but I saw on one of the reviews that a guy did four 45s per handle and they seemed to hold up, hold up just fine. So let's test these out and see how they do. Well, they seem pretty sturdy. In my hands, they feel really solid. They don't feel very flimsy. The whole thing is made with metal, so I'm pretty sure they're gonna last a very long time. For, I think, 40 bucks, whatever it was. Great purchase. I definitely recommend these if you're looking for a cheap solution for farmer carries. All right, here it all is. Dumbbell rack, nice and sexy. I don't like that it's gunmetal. I wish it was black, but I'd probably save it for right now. Bench is all done. With the cuts, not that big of a deal to me. It's a nice bench for 40 bucks, what a great deal. I might paint the bolts black on that, however. Landmines and the handles fit under here nice with also the uh, weight belt, the ab mat, ab roll, all that kind of stuff kind of tucked away under here. I'm not quite sure how I like it right here though because it takes away some of the space if you have a bar in here width wise. So I might move it towards the front of the gym once my buddy Roderick moves his bike, but who knows how long that'll be. So in the meantime, it'll probably sit right here. Um, I don't mind it at all. But one thing I want to focus on for the next week or two is trying to get rid of as much stuff as I can that's stored on that top storage lip, whatever it's called. And then from there, I'll kind of put some more stuff up there to take to leave more viable space on the floor. But if you guys have any questions or comments on any of these pieces of equipment, make sure you leave them down in the comment section. I plan on doing individual reviews for each one of these things. But if you have something that you want to get right away for your garage gym, let me know down below and I'll make sure to get a video out sooner rather than later. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't already, follow us on Instagram at Constant Fitness, and we'll see you guys next time.